Good morning and welcome to the video for fifth grade for module five, lesson two from Into Math. This is Mr. Parks, the math teacher at Risen Christ Lutheran School. And we are going to be continuing working with volume today. So our first problem that we're gonna talk about is one that we talked about in class. And we are going to try to figure out how many game cubes are packed into this particular shape. We're gonna start with the bottom layer. So we are figuring out how many we can count from left to right. For the bottom layer, we're also going to figure out how many we're counting from front to back. And then eventually, we will also count um, how many are stacked on top of each other, counting the height. So to start with, we are counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times 3. That's going to give us 24 cubes on the bottom layer if we don't have any gaps or overlaps. Um, the number of layers would be 1, 2, 3, 4. And so we would multiply both of these numbers together to get the answer. So we're doing the length times the width times the height, and that would give us 96 cubes. And if the volume is going to uh, be made up of unit cubes, uh, we would get a volume of 96 cubes. So most of what we're working on for the homework will be either counting or we'll use multiplication uh, to help us find the answers. And this is the video that I'm going to uh, do a brief talk through of the homework problems, hopefully um, making that a little bit longer, but more helpful for uh, students and parents. Uh, number two, we are measuring this. We wanna figure out how many beads we are working with. So again, we are going to figure out uh, how many are going from left to right, how many are going from front to back here, kind of diagonally, and then how many are going from top to bottom. And so that's what we are working with. We are going to say that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times four. So we get 36 times the height. And we can do one, two, three, four, five, six. And so if we go ahead and multiply those two numbers, I'll do this out to the side. We're working with, for fifth grade, it, this should be easy by this point in time, the multiplication part. If it's not, I would definitely recommend your student practice on their multiplication facts. Again, we're not asking them to count by 36s. We could write out a list of numbers if we were, um, but they should be able to do this part here. So six times six gives us 36. We carry a three, and then six times three would give us 18 plus three. If, they, if they're struggling with that part, definitely have your student practice multiplication facts um, because that's going to be something that we're going to be working with a lot during this module. Um, they're going to need to be able to do those relatively quickly. Our volume is going to be 216 um, in cubic centimeters. If we're doing inches, we would just replace the word with inches. So we would say 216 uh, cubic inches. And we could also represent that with the IN abbreviation and then write the number three for cubed. Uh, whereas when we're working with area, we could write the number two to show that we're working with the square. Um, for number one at the bottom, again, we can go ahead and do the same thing. So we're working with four times six times, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we would get 36 times four. So six times six, I would start with that to get 36 times four. Going to be similar to what we did before. And we're going to get 24, carry a two, and we get 14. So 144. And then for this one, we would do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and skip to the homework just to give you an idea again, because most of the homework problems, we're doing the exact same thing. So what we're looking to do is, again, we are looking for each of these problems to do the length, which is left to right, times the width, which is going to be from front to back, uh, as the way I teach it, and then the height is going to be going up. So we could go ahead and start by finding these two numbers. I normally just tell students, do it however you want. So if it's easier for you to go ahead, because the height is usually shorter on most of these, to take your first two numbers for the length and the width 
and then multiply that larger number times four, that's what I would recommend. Um, that makes it a little bit easier. Uh, this one, the height's only three. So again, I would probably start with this number times this number. Uh, for this one, since the height is larger, what I might recommend is to find this part first. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times eight. Find that number and then multiply it by the width, which would be four. Um, and that might be an easier way to approach that problem. Um, the volume, okay, yeah, so we could just get all of our numbers. So rectangular prism with 14 centimeter cubes on the bottom layer. So the bottom layer is going to be, let's say that we did seven going this way and two going this way. And so we would have something that looks like this. And if I could correctly break it up into seven, I would be doing really well. Actually, that's pretty darn close. I will take that. So here's our bottom layer, and then we have eight layers high, okay? So we're doing the uh, length times the width. So actually, that came out pretty well for a first guess on uh, trying to draw that picture. So that's what we're looking for for that. We want to find the total volume. So we're going to take 14 times eight. Um, on the back, again, I'm always going to recommend for my students, set a timer. If you're spending more than two minutes on any of these problems, just go ahead and uh, put down an answer, and then I give full corrections for homework corrections. Um, different for the test, but there's no reason to spend five, ten minutes on each of these problems. Um, it causes str uh, struggle and headaches for the parents as well as for the students. Um, they're good to practice with because those are similar to what we'll see on the actual test, including um, on standardized testing, um, but it's not worth spending five or more minutes working on these problems. Two minutes is, is enough for those. Um, and then for each of these, we're doing review. So again, we're gonna follow order of operations. We would have to do the part in parentheses first. Uh, for this one, you're actually going to have to use parentheses um, somewhere and try it. We only have three different options. So try each option, see which one for both of these is going to give you the value that we're looking for. On each of these, we are looking to get the value of 12. So I hope that's helpful. Again, uh, the video is a couple extra minutes. Hopefully the, the time is well used and helpful for you and your student. If it is, and it makes it easier and you'd like to see me continue adding the homework problems uh, and a quick review of what we're working on, uh, to each video, please give me a like on the video or send me a message for my Risen Christ students and their families, um, either by text or by email, uh, to let me know that that's a good use of my time and that's something that you would like to see in the future. Hope you have a great day and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.